after no interruption, the Dems lean into corruption. It's Tuesday, so you know what that means. We'll take your money, don't ask where it's going. Insane amounts of Swiss bank accounts are overflowing. Cheat, steal, and lie to one bats an eye. Did you not notice? We have no qualms if you grease our palms. Just ask the POTUS. Financial crimes can be fun sometimes, as Hunter showed us. If you like interns and guards and gold bars, join the DNC. It's the place to be when you are the face of corruption. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you remember that song, you probably own an acorn stair lift. <laughs> Let's first discuss the Clinton Global Initiative, not to be confused with Bill Clinton's oral initiative. <laughs> the organization announced the CGI Ukraine Action Network, allegedly to help rebuild that war-torn country and provide humanitarian aid. And like most CGI, it seems convincing until you take a closer look. Here's how it works. The Dems send Ukraine a bunch of money, your money, by the way, to blow stuff up. And then the Dems send a bunch, of mo bunch more of your money to fix the stuff that just got blown up. And of course, they get a taste of that cash. What a great system, right? Rebuild, destroy, rebuild. And the Dems get paid both ways. It's the old mafia trick. Bust a bunch of storefront windows and then open a window repair shop. So now the Clintons have set their greedy fingers on Ukraine. I'll bet Bill is in charge of the women's prisons. <laughs> well, he does have experience sneaking cigars into small spaces. <laughs> now, just don't ask Hillary why the Russian reset didn't work, or that a decade ago, Obama told us to forget about Russia. Back then, the biggest challenge was freeing women from Mitt Romney's binders. Remember when Obama said the 1980s are calling to ask for their foreign policy back? He's about as good at predictions as he is at hoops. <laughs> well, the 80s did call, Barack, just to say they're glad you stopped eating dogs. <laughs> People forget that. Clearly, our audience did. <laughs> he ate a dog. Look it up. But now that there's money to be made, the Russians are suddenly back. However, one must ask, where was the Clinton Global Initiative during the Trump years? Hillary tried to convince everybody there was Russian collusion, but her CGI group lay dormant like her gym membership for that entire four years. No wonder they hated <laughs> Trump. The gravy train dried up like a stain on an intern's dress. <laughs> Now that Trump's out of office, Hillary is back in a big way, and she's making a killing. Okay, bad choice of words on my part. <laughs> but it's weird how that works, right? Putin waited till a Democrat was in the White House to invade Ukraine, and now the cash is flowing to the Dems. But the Clintons aren't the only ones who've got, who figured out how to profit from other people's misfortune. Ibram X. Kendi... The X stands for extra racist, is now responding after his Center for So-Called Anti-Racist Research at Boston U laid off half of the staff, blowing through 30 million bucks while only releasing two research papers in two years. And one of them was just 500 pages of the word honky. <laughs> Fact is, Kendi, formerly known as Mr. Henry Rogers, doesn't want you to be his neighbor unless you're a guilty corporation with cash to burn. So where did all that money go? What does BU have to show for it? Couldn't that money pay student loans for art history majors so they don't harass me for tips at Starbucks? And how is it anti-racist to bilk a bunch of suckers out of their dough? Only a school dumb enough to accept AOC as a student would fall for that crap. But Kendi Rogers has responded to the controversy. Quote, there will always be people who critique the job someone else is doing. Well, yeah, that's your literal job description, bozo. You're the rotten tomatoes of race. According to con artists like Ibram X. Kendi, racism means any criticism of Ibram X. Kendi, including asking why he was handed $30 million to squander. Kendi got his big payday, and you all can just fend for yourselves. The way this guy operates would make Al Sharpton blush. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Fat Sharpton will always be my favorite Sharpton. <laughs> There's so much there to hug. 
If all that isn't cartoonishly corrupt enough for you, how about Bob Menendez? The feds found an untold fortune in gold bars stashed away at his house. Who the hell does this guy think he is? William Devane? <laughs> Menendez also allegedly hid tons of cash in his monogrammed windbreakers. Funny, usually when I hear Democrat and windbreaker, I think Eric Swalwell. Uh, it's uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. <laughs> It's an oldie, but a smelly. <laughs> now, Menendez's job was chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, you know, which is a lot like Tony Soprano working in waste management. It's just a cover to get bribes from foreign powers because they always need something in return. Say, didn't Joe Biden have that job, too? Hard to believe. There's someone dumber than Hunter when it comes to hiding bribes. Even Crack Boy didn't say, hey, just give it to me in gold and pieces of eight like a pirate. It's the second time in a decade that Menendez has gotten busted for corruption, and he'll probably get away with it again, because Dems do look after their own. When you're a Democrat, corruption is just a fact of life. Make a big speech about rebuilding Ukraine or stopping racism or whatever, and then line your own pockets and your dad's or your son's. The people you claim to be helping may or may not benefit at all, but you sure do. And corruption comes in all colors, white, black, brown, whatever. But the only color they really care about, care about is green. Or in the case of the Bidens, white. But worst of all, this money is mostly your money, which they see as their money. They use political power for financial gain. And as long as their politics lurch left, nothing can stop them. It makes you wonder if you chose the wrong political side or should you really actually work an honest job for a living? One thing's for sure, though unlike the big guy, no one's putting aside 10% for us. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's proof that playing soccer causes head trauma. Host of One Nation and Fox and Friends, Brian Kilmeade. She's as vivacious as she is loquacious. Host of the Fox True Crime Podcast, Emily Campagno. As a resident of L.A., her favorite hobby is running for her life. Fox Business correspondent Kelly O'Grady. And finally, people are surprised that someone this attractive is also funny. Comedian Joe Mackey. <laughs> Brian, you know, the Clintons love money as much as you love the limelight. <laughs> I really don't have anything after that. You want me to go? Yeah. I would, <laughs> Ukraine needs to be rebuilt, no doubt about it, eventually. But I feel better if Frank Siller was doing it for Tunnel for Towers. They were, I know the money would get there. Since when has she ever produced money for charities or an organization that actually did anything to give her power and influence? I couldn't believe she's teaming with the ambassador for Ukraine. There's got to be a better team. Disappointed, number one. Number two is, I actually think uh, Ukraine, the Russian invasion of Ukraine is criminal. And you need to fight back. But I also have trouble sleeping because I'm on the same side as Sean Penn and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. So I definitely need to see that therapist, same with some of the, maybe the therapist that goes to your office every day. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could send her down there. It is indeed strange bedfellows, right? And it's excusing all sorts of behavior, like, for example, lionizing a Nazi in Canada, Brian. Oh, you're talking about Justin Trudeau? Yes. Right. No, he's not a Nazi. Right. Well, but maybe. He, he honored by mistake yeah. a Nazi. Yeah. It happens. You think you have a war that hero, happens. it turns out being a Nazi criminal. <laughs> it's happened to all of us once in a while. <laughs> I liked it. The man of the year, I mean, the most evil man ever walked the planet. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I picked up the wrong trophy. Yes, yes. Right. yes. I get it. You hire a gardener, it turns out he's a Nazi. Yeah. But you bring him to so Parliament, right. that's a big deal. So, Emily, is this why? They didn't want Trump back in office, and they're fighting so hard because if Trump, if Trump doesn't win, or if Trump wins, there goes the gravy train again. Absolutely. And keep in mind that this is right after we learned that we left behind upwards of $83 billion of assets in Afghanistan. That's our money, right? Thanks to Adam Andrzejewski, we know $175 million worth of drones alone. We left more planes and air power there left behind in Afghanistan than other NATO nations have on their own. And now, to your point, tax money, taxpayer dollars is now going to Ukraine. So 
the Dory memory that taxpayers are subjected to means that we're supposed to forget about, about the debauchery and we're supposed to forget about the multi-millions and billions that we've already spent and invested because of their failed foreign policy. But to your point, they're trying to ram it in, no thanks to as well as we were talking about earlier, the AG of New York's continual prosecution of the Trump Foundation. It's like amazing. their charity can do no wrong, right? But the Trump Foundation is serially the subject of criminal and civil investigations. Um, can I make one quick point about the Kendi thing, too? Sure. Right. Just that. Just a point. She just interrupted herself to... <laughs> yes. I was <laughs> politely asking for permission. Right. Okay. So his quote was that women and people of color, he says, are held to unfair standards when they start. He said, I just, I'm asking for a fair shake. Can't leaders of new organizations be given time to yes. develop, mm -hmm. time to make mistakes? No, man. The whole point is if you blow through 30 million in two years, yes, you're going to get axed. The whole point is anyone, regardless of color, if they squander and suck, then yes, they're going to be axed out, I there guess, except go. for Bill Clinton. There you go, Emily. He's the only exception. <laughs> Everyone's lost 30 million once. <laughs> Kelly O'Grady. Good to see you, Kelly O'Grady. Good to be here. I feel like I need a pint of Guinness when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It's after 5 o'clock, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> 5 o'clock somewhere. So uh, let me ask you this. So you see this, uh, you see Menendez says the attacks on him are racist. Kennedy says it's attacks on racists. It's kind of unfair to the Clintons because they can't say that. <laughs> I'm sure they would find a way if mm -hmm. they could, right? Yeah. Or sexist, right, if, if Hillary's jumping in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just see this and I get so frustrated because I, I agree with you, Brian, right? You know, we do need to rebuild Ukraine. But why aren't we putting some of that money towards the chaos that's in our own backyard, right? Mm -hmm. You said I'm running for my life out in Los Angeles. I can affirm that that is correct. Mm -hmm. I have a French bulldog as well. His name's Biggie. Oh. We should get guests together. Biggie. Yeah, does he fart like a... <laughs> Just oh, every single night, snores in my ear. Yeah. It's a miracle I'm awake. Yeah. But I'm I'm walking around trying to make sure that this dog doesn't get stolen. We have homeless encampments everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why can't we put some of that money towards that instead of, you yeah. know, more and more money to Ukraine? Oh, wait, we would have to be reminded that it's liberal policies that created that. We don't want to highlight that. Exactly. So we care more about a border across the globe than our very own border Brian, so put that in your pipe. You could do smoke. two things, you know that, right? You There's can't two separate do two budgets. things. <laughs> I can so. No, you can't. Right? Yes, Let's can. go to Joe Mackey, the sexiest man alive. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, you're a, you're a big Clinton fan. You've been a huge you've been a huge follower of Hillary since day one. This must really disgust you. I don't know where you did your research, but I have to check my Wikipedia page again. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, Greg, you mentioned the mafia in the monologue. And to me, it is like the mafia. Uh, it's you have to pay for protection because we all know crime goes on. We all know that there's a lot of Republicans and Democrats uh, that somehow go into office poor and come out rich. And they get these like speaking agreements for more money than you get paid for a Joe Mackey stand up show. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it doesn't make any financial sense to anybody, really. <laughs> no. uh, but the, the problem is you just have to take the bribe on the right side, mm -hmm. you know? That's like a, like Menendez went against uh, Obama with uh, Cuba. Mm -hmm. He went against Biden with the uh, Iran, mm -hmm. and he's getting investigated, but Hillary Clinton's uh, having people take hammers to servers. Nothing happens. That's why you just never see people like bribe on the wrong side. Like no one bribes the cops to do good. Yes. <laughs> Has anybody <laughs> tried to bribe you to tell a certain joke? Uh, no, they usually, uh, they, they call them out, but when they know the joke, it's not funny because they know <laughs> the answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good point. You know, the thing is, if you did any of this behavior in the private sector, you would go to prison. The, well, uh, the Black Lives Matter thing is the most underreported, mm -hmm. underfocused thing. I cannot believe how much money is in, how much money is gone, and no one paid the price for it. And everyone's afraid to say, hey, uh, we put in 10, 20, 30 million dollars, and there's absolutely nobody running the organization. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gotten better. No one's gotten educated. That story that you gave me to read and comprehend, and I do do my homework. Yeah. It had, the, the $30 million, they were supposed to, one of these uh, groups was supposed to give a grant mm -hmm. to a high school group to go to Africa to learn more. And all of a sudden they go, the money's gone, sorry. And the kids, after a while, just disbanded their organization and was going to go, and everyone's out money. And no one gets prosecuted. Ugh. It's incredible. It, you have to admit, though, that's a terrible trip for spring break. That's true. <laughs> well, it's a long drive. It's a long drive. Yeah, it's right. a really long drive. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.